Question 1. What should you do when you approach an intersection and see a no turn on red sign? A. Turn right if there is no visible traffic. B. Wait for the green light before turning. C. Stop and then proceed with caution. Answer. B. Wait for the green light before turning. A no turn on red sign means you must wait for the green light to turn right legally. Question 2. Describe the actions a driver should take upon encountering a flooded road sign. A. Drive through quickly to avoid stalling. B. Avoid the road and find an alternative route. C. Continue at a reduced speed. Answer. B. Avoid the road and find an alternative route. When a road is marked as flooded, finding an alternative route is safer to prevent vehicle damage or loss of control. Question 3. What precautions should be taken when driving on a road with a loose gravel sign? A. Increase speed to pass over gravel quickly. B. Maintain or slightly reduce speed. C. Reduce speed and maintain a steady steering control. Answer. C. Reduce speed and maintain a steady steering control. Loose gravel can cause a vehicle to skid, especially at high speeds. Question 4. Explain the rules for using a lane marked as bike route. A. The lane is exclusively for cyclist use. B. Drivers can use the lane for passing only. C. Vehicles are not allowed in the bike lane at any time. Answer. A. The lane is exclusively for cyclist use. A bike route lane is designated only for bicycles to enhance safety for cyclists. Question 5. What does a slow-moving vehicle sign indicate, and how should drivers react? A. It marks a vehicle that can exceed normal highway speeds. B. It signifies a vehicle moving slower than the normal speed of traffic. C. It is a warning to slow down for upcoming curves. Answer. B. It signifies a vehicle moving slower than the normal speed of traffic. Drivers should be cautious and may need to pass the slow-moving vehicle when it's safe. Question 6. Describe how to make a left turn at an intersection that has a left turn yield on green sign. A. Turn left immediately when the light turns green. B. Yield to oncoming traffic before turning. C. Wait for a dedicated left turn signal. Answer. B. Yield to oncoming traffic before turning. This sign indicates that you must yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians before completing your left turn. Question 7. How should drivers interpret an added lane sign on a highway? A. Merge quickly as lanes are reducing. B. Lane ends. Merge to the left or right. C. No need to merge. An additional lane begins. Answer. C. No need to merge. An additional lane begins. An added lane sign indicates a new lane is added to the roadway. Merging is not required. Question 8. What is the significance of a two-way left turn lane? A. It is for immediate left turns only. B. It is shared for left turns for traffic from both directions. C. It indicates a lane for right turns as well. Answer. B. It is shared for left turns for traffic from both directions. This lane allows vehicles from both directions to make left turns. Question 9. If you see a no parking sign, what does this indicate about stopping, standing, and parking? A. Parking is allowed for a limited time. B. Stopping temporarily is permitted only for passenger drop-off. C. No stopping, standing, or parking at any time. Answer. C. No stopping, standing, or parking at any time. A no parking sign strictly prohibits all three actions in the designated area. Question 10. When driving in heavy traffic, what are the key things to remember in order to maintain safety? A. Increase speed to find a better position. B. Keep a safe following distance and stay alert. C. Frequently change lanes to advance. Answer. B. Keep a safe following distance and stay alert. 
maintaining a safe distance and being aware of the surrounding traffic are crucial in heavy traffic conditions. Question 11. How should you react to an emergency vehicle approaching while you are in traffic? A. Continue at the same speed and direction. B. Pull over to the right and stop. C. Accelerate to clear the lane. Answer. B. Pull over to the right and stop. When an emergency vehicle is approaching with sirens, the law requires drivers to move to the right and stop. Question 12. What are the consequences of failing to yield the right of way to a pedestrian at a crosswalk? A. There are no specific consequences. B. A warning from the traffic authorities. C. Possible fines and points on the driver's license. Answer. C. Possible fines and points on the driver's license. Failing to yield to pedestrians can lead to serious legal consequences, including fines and points. Question 13. How do you determine the safe following distance on a wet road? A. Follow the three-second rule. B. Double the normal dry road following distance. C. Maintain a one-second following distance. Answer. B. Double the normal dry road following distance. Wet roads require more stopping distance, so it's safer to increase the following distance. Question 14. What should you do if your vehicle begins to skid on an icy road? A. Steer in the opposite direction of the skid. B. Steer in the direction of the skid to regain control. C. Apply brakes firmly and hold them. Answer. B. Steer in the direction of the skid to regain control. This helps to realign the tires with the direction of travel and regain control of the vehicle. Question 15. When is it legally required to use your vehicle's headlights? A. Only when streetlights are on. B. From sunset to sunrise and during poor visibility conditions. C. When driving in rural areas only. Answer. B. From sunset to sunrise and during poor visibility conditions. Headlights must be used during these times to ensure visibility and safety. Question 16. Describe the proper procedure for changing lanes on a multi-lane highway. A. Signal, check mirrors, and quickly change lanes. B. Signal, check mirrors, and check blind spots before changing lanes. C. Change lanes without signaling if there is no visible traffic. Answer. B. Signal, check mirrors, and check blind spots before changing lanes. This ensures the move is made safely without causing disruption to the traffic flow. Question 17. What steps should a driver take after being involved in a minor traffic accident? A. Leave the vehicle in the road. B. Move the vehicle out of the traffic lane if possible, then exchange information. C. Drive away quickly to avoid congestion. Answer. B. Move the vehicle out of the traffic lane if possible, then exchange information. This helps to prevent further accidents and congestion. Question 18. How do seatbelt laws in California affect drivers and passengers? A. Seatbelts are optional for adults in the rear seats. B. All vehicle occupants are required to wear seatbelts. C. Only the driver and front seat passengers must wear seatbelts. Answer. B. All vehicle occupants are required to wear seatbelts. This law is enforced to ensure the safety of all occupants in the vehicle. Question 19. What are the restrictions for using a cell phone while driving in California? A. Handheld use is permitted at all times. B. Handheld use is banned. Only hands-free methods are allowed. C. No restrictions on cell phone use while driving. Answer. B. Handheld use is banned. Only hands-free methods are allowed. This law is designed to reduce distractions and increase road safety. Question 20. How does California law regulate the driving speed near schools and playgrounds? A. No specific speed limit is required. B. Speed limits are generally 25 miles per hour during school hours. C. Drivers can decide the appropriate speed. 
Answer. B. Speed limits are generally 25 miles per hour during school hours. This reduced speed limit helps ensure the safety of children around schools. Question 21. When is it permissible for a driver to cross a double yellow line on the road? A. To pass another vehicle when traffic permits. B. Only when making a left turn into a driveway or business. C. At any time if the driver deems it safe. Answer. B. Only when making a left turn into a driveway or business. Crossing a double yellow line is generally prohibited except when turning left where permissible, such as into driveways or businesses. Question 22. Describe the protocol for yielding right-of-way at an uncontrolled intersection. A. The vehicle to the right always has the right-of-way. B. The first vehicle to arrive has the right-of-way. C. Yield to all oncoming traffic before proceeding. Answer. A. The vehicle to the right always has the right-of-way. At uncontrolled intersections, the right-of-way rule applies, giving priority to the driver on the right. Question 23. What steps should a driver take to safely pass a bicycle on the road? A. Honk to alert the cyclist before passing. B. Pass with no less than three feet of clearance. C. Accelerate quickly to pass the cyclist. Answer. B. Pass with no less than three feet of clearance. For safety, California law requires motorists to maintain a minimum distance of three feet when passing bicycles. Question 24. Under what conditions is it required to stop before proceeding when a school bus is stopped on the road? A. If the bus is on the opposite side of a divided highway. B. Only if the bus displays flashing red lights and the stop arm is extended. C. Whenever the bus is stopped, regardless of its signals. Answer. B. Only if the bus displays flashing red lights and the stop arm is extended. Drivers must stop to ensure the safety of children boarding or alighting from the bus. Question 25. How should a driver respond to a flashing red traffic light at an intersection? A. Treat it as a stop sign, stop completely, then proceed when safe. B. Slow down and proceed with caution. C. Ignore the flashing light if no traffic is present. Answer. A. Treat it as a stop sign, stop completely, then proceed when safe. A flashing red light is legally the same as a stop sign. Question 26. Explain the procedure for parking on a hill with and without a curb. A. Always turn your wheels away from the curb. B. Turn your wheels away from the curb if facing uphill, toward the curb if downhill. C. Keep wheels straight in all situations. Answer. B. Turn your wheels away from the curb if facing uphill, toward the curb if downhill. This prevents the car from rolling into traffic or off the road if the brakes fail. Question 27. What should a driver do if their accelerator gets stuck while driving? A. Continue to push hard on the accelerator. B. Shift to neutral and apply the brakes. C. Turn off the engine immediately. Answer. B. Shift to neutral and apply the brakes. This method allows the driver to safely slow down and control the vehicle. Question 28. What is the rule for turning into a bike lane when preparing to make a right turn? A. Enter the bike lane no more than 200 feet before the turn. B. Never enter the bike lane. C. Enter the bike lane at any point during the turn. Answer. A. Enter the bike lane no more than 200 feet before the turn. This action should be done carefully to avoid conflicts with cyclists. Question 29. How do anti-lock brakes, abs, assist a driver during an emergency braking situation? A. They lock the wheels to prevent the car from moving. B. They prevent the wheels from locking up, allowing the driver to maintain steering control. C. They automatically steer the vehicle away from obstacles. Answer. B. They prevent the wheels from locking up, allowing the driver to maintain steering control. 
This technology helps maintain vehicle control during sudden stops. Question 30. What are the requirements for a driver approaching a railroad crossing with active warning signals? A. Stop no closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet from the nearest rail. B. Speed up to cross the tracks quickly before the train arrives. C. Ignore the signals if no train is visible. Answer. A. Stop no closer than 15 feet and no further than 50 feet from the nearest rail. This safety measure ensures that the vehicle remains a safe distance from the tracks. Question 31. How should a driver handle exiting a freeway? A. Signal and immediately move into the exit lane. B. Begin signaling, check mirrors, and gradually move into the exit lane. C. Exit at high speed to merge with traffic. Answer. B. Begin signaling, check mirrors, and gradually move into the exit lane. This approach allows for a smooth and safe transition from freeway speeds to the exit ramp. Question 32. Explain the difference between yield and stop signs and the actions required at each. A. Yield means stop if necessary. Stop means stop regardless of traffic conditions. B. Yield means slow down. Stop means come to a complete halt. C. Both signs require a full stop at all times. Answer. A. Yield means stop if necessary. Stop means stop regardless of traffic conditions. Understanding the difference ensures compliance with traffic laws and safety. Question 33. What is the recommended action if you experience tire failure while driving at high speed? A. Brake hard and immediately to stop the vehicle. B. Maintain your course and slow down gradually. C. Pull off to the side of the road immediately. Answer. B. Maintain your course and slow down gradually. This prevents loss of control, allowing the driver to stop safely. Question 34. How can a driver safely navigate through dense fog? A. Use high beams for better visibility. B. Use low beams and fog lights if available. C. Increase speed to minimize time spent in fog. Answer. B. Use low beams and fog lights if available. High beams reflect off the fog and can decrease visibility even further. Question 35. What are the legal requirements for child restraint systems in California? A. All children under 8 must be secured in a car seat or booster seat in the back seat. B. Children can sit in the front seat with an adult seat belt if no child seat is available. C. Child seats are optional for children over five years old. Answer A. All children under eight must be secured in a car seat or booster seat in the back seat. This law is designed to protect young children in the event of a crash. Question 36. Describe the correct use of turn signals before making a lane change. A. Signal at least 50 feet before the change. B. Signal just as you begin to change lanes. C. Signal is not necessary if lanes are clear. Answer. A. Signal at least 50 feet before the change. This gives other drivers time to adjust to your intended actions, enhancing safety. Question 37. What are the penalties for driving under the influence, Dewey, in California? A. Mandatory attendance in a driving school. B fines, license suspension, and possible jail time. C. A warning for the first offense. Answer. B. Fines, license suspension, and possible jail time. Due penalties are severe to deter impaired driving and ensure public safety. Question 38. How does one handle situations where an animal suddenly runs in front of the vehicle? A. Swerve quickly to avoid hitting the animal. B. Maintain your lane and slow down safely. C. Accelerate to pass before the animal crosses. Answer. B. Maintain your lane and slow down safely. Swerving might cause a more dangerous situation or loss of vehicle control. 
Question 39. What should drivers be aware of when driving in areas with heavy pedestrian traffic? A. Increase speed to clear the area quickly. B. Always yield to pedestrians, even if they are not in a crosswalk. C. Honk to alert pedestrians of your presence. Answer. B. Always yield to pedestrians, even if they are not in a crosswalk. This practice enhances safety for all road users in densely populated areas. Question 40. Explain the concept of right-of-way when multiple drivers arrive at a four-way stop simultaneously. A. The driver to the left has the right-of-way. B. The driver on the smaller road must yield. C. The driver to the right has the right-of-way. Answer. C. The driver to the right has the right-of-way. This rule helps prevent confusion and accidents at intersections without traffic signals. Question 41. What should a driver do upon approaching a flashing yellow light at an intersection? A. Stop completely before proceeding. B. Proceed with caution. C. Accelerate to clear the intersection quickly. Answer. B. Proceed with caution. A flashing yellow light advises vigilance and caution, allowing the driver to proceed but with awareness of potential hazards. Question 42. How should a driver react when a traffic signal turns yellow as they are approaching an intersection? A. Speed up to beat the red light. B. Stop immediately, regardless of the situation. C. Prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. Answer. C. Prepare to stop if it is safe to do so. The yellow light is a warning that the signal is about to change to red, and if safe, the driver should stop. Question 43. Describe the process of making a legal U-turn in a residential area. A. Make the U-turn at any intersection, regardless of signage. B. Only make the U-turn at intersections with a U-turn permitted sign. C. Check for sign age prohibiting U-turns and ensure no traffic is coming. Answer. C. Check for sign age prohibiting U-turns and ensure no traffic is coming. This ensures the maneuver is made safely and legally. Question 44. What are the steps to follow if you are involved in a hit-and-run accident? A. Chase the fleeing vehicle to get its license plate number. B. Stop call the police, and wait for them to arrive. C. Leave the scene if there are no serious injuries. Answer. B. Stop. Call the police and wait for them to arrive. It is important to report the incident and provide information while remaining at the scene. Question 45. How should you adjust your driving in response to adverse weather conditions such as heavy rain or snow? A. Maintain normal speeds to keep traffic flowing. B. Reduce speed and increase following distance. C. Use cruise control to maintain a steady speed. Answer. B. Reduce speed and increase following distance. Adverse weather conditions can reduce visibility and increase stopping distances, requiring more cautious driving. Question 46. What is the legal requirement for using headlights during rain or fog? A. Headlights are not required, but recommended. B. Use high beams to improve visibility. C. Use low beams and fog lights, if available. Answer. C. Use low beams and fog lights, if available. High beams can reflect off precipitation and fog, reducing visibility. Question 47. Explain how to properly check blind spots before performing a lane change. A. Rely on mirrors only. B. Physically turn to check over your shoulder in addition to using mirrors. C. Assume there are no cars in your blind spots if you do not see any in your mirrors. Answer. B. Physically turn to check over your shoulder in addition to using mirrors. This ensures that the area is clear before changing lanes. Question 48. What actions should a driver take if they encounter a funeral procession? A. Immediately join the procession to maintain traffic flow. B. Yield the right-of-way until the entire procession has passed. C. 
honk to signal the procession to move faster. Answer B. Yield the right of way until the entire procession has passed. It's respectful and often legally required to allow a funeral procession to pass uninterrupted. Question 49. How can a driver determine whether they are following another vehicle too closely? A. If they cannot see the rear wheels of the vehicle ahead when driving. B. By ensuring they can pass the vehicle in front within 10 seconds. C. Using the three-second rule to maintain a safe following distance. Answer. C. Using the three-second rule to maintain a safe following distance. This rule helps ensure there is enough time to react and avoid collisions. Question 50. What are the restrictions on towing another vehicle with a chain or rope in California? A. Towing with a chain or rope is not permitted. A tow bar must be used. B. Towing is permitted, but the chain or rope must not exceed 6 feet in length. C. There are no specific restrictions on towing with a chain or rope. Answer. A. Towing with a chain or rope is not permitted. A tow bar must be used. This rule ensures safety by preventing unpredictable movements and accidents. Question 51. What should you do if you find debris on the freeway? A. Stop and remove the debris from the roadway. B. Call the authorities and report the location of the debris. C. Swerve around the debris and continue driving. Answer. B. Call the authorities and report the location of the debris. Stopping on a freeway can be dangerous. It is safer to notify the authorities who can safely remove the debris. Question 52. How does California law address the use of headphones while driving? A. Using headphones in both ears is allowed for all drivers. B. Using headphones in both ears is prohibited for all drivers. C. Headphones may only be used in one ear. Answer. C. Headphones may only be used in one ear. This allows drivers to maintain awareness of their surroundings while driving. Question 53. What are the guidelines for adjusting your speed based on different road conditions? A. Always drive at or below the posted speed limit. B. Adjust speed to match road conditions, even if it means driving below the speed limit. C. The posted speed limit should always be maintained, regardless of conditions. Answer. B. Adjust speed to match road conditions, even if it means driving below the speed limit. This ensures safety by accommodating changes in road traction and visibility. Question 54. Describe the proper way to handle a right turn at an intersection that has a dedicated bike lane. A. Turn right immediately from your travel lane, ignoring the bike lane. B. Signal, then merge into the bike lane before making the turn. C. Stop and yield to all bicyclists before turning. Answer. B. Signal, then merge into the bike lane before making the turn. This method minimizes conflicts with cyclists and is the legal way to make right turns across bike lanes. Question 55. What are the key factors a driver should consider when choosing a safe speed to travel at night? A. Visibility, traffic flow, and vehicle condition. B. Speed limits and the presence of law enforcement. C. Time of night and fatigue levels. Answer. A. Visibility, traffic flow, and vehicle condition. These factors are crucial for safe driving at night, ensuring that the driver can respond to road conditions and hazards. Question 56. Explain how to use hazard lights appropriately on a vehicle. A. Use them only when parked and needing assistance. B. Turn them on while driving through heavy traffic. C. Use them to signal a lane change on highways. Answer. A. Use them only when parked and needing assistance. Hazard lights should be used to indicate a stopped or disabled vehicle to alert other drivers. Question 57. What steps should be taken if your vehicle's brakes fail while driving? A. Pump the brake pedal rapidly. If ineffective, use the parking brake. B. Continue driving until the vehicle runs out of speed. C. 
exit the vehicle if it is still moving slowly? Answer. A. Pump the brake pedal rapidly. If ineffective, use the parking brake. This can help to build brake pressure or slow the vehicle down safely. Question 58. What precautions should drivers take in school zones? A. Maintain a high speed to minimize time in the zone. B. Observe reduced speed limits and watch for children and crossing guards. C. Honk to alert pedestrians of your approach. Answer. B. Observe reduced speed limits and watch for children and crossing guards. These actions ensure the safety of children around schools. Question 59. How should a driver handle a situation where the traffic lights at an intersection are not functioning? A. Treat the intersection as if it is controlled by a four-way stop sign. B. Proceed cautiously without stopping. C. Wait for the lights to be repaired before proceeding. Answer. A. Treat the intersection as if it is controlled by a four-way stop sign. This approach ensures all drivers proceed safely and predictably. Question 60. What are the legal obligations of drivers when sharing the road with emergency vehicles? A. Follow closely behind emergency vehicles to get through traffic faster. B. Move over to the right and stop to allow emergency vehicles to pass. C. Ignore emergency vehicles unless they signal you to move. Answer. B. Move over to the right and stop to allow emergency vehicles to pass. This provides a clear path for emergency responders and is required by law. Question 61. What is the procedure for turning right at a red light where no turn on red signs are not displayed? A. Stop completely, check for traffic and pedestrians, then proceed if clear. B. Turn right without stopping. C. Wait for the green light to turn right. Answer. A. Stop completely, check for traffic and pedestrians, then proceed if clear. Even without a no turn on red sign, you must stop to ensure it is safe before proceeding. Question 62. What are the consequences of parking in a spot designated by a no parking sign? A. You may be fined and your vehicle could be towed. B. No consequences as long as you are present in the vehicle. C. You are allowed to park for a limited time. Answer. A. You may be fined and your vehicle could be towed. Parking in a no parking zone is illegal and typically enforced with fines or towing. Question 63. How should a driver adjust their route if a road ahead is closed due to flooding? A. Drive through the water slowly to avoid damage. B. Turn around and find an alternate route. C. Wait until the water recedes. Answer. B. Turn around and find an alternate route. It's unsafe to drive through floodwaters, as it can cause vehicle damage and loss of control. Question 64. What precautions should a driver take when driving adjacent to a bike route lane? A. Ignore the cyclists as they have their own lane. B. Be vigilant and give cyclists plenty of space when passing. C. Drive in the bike lane if no cyclists are present. Answer. B. Be vigilant and give cyclists plenty of space when passing. Even with a dedicated bike lane, drivers should remain aware of cyclists' presence and movements. Question 65. How should drivers adjust their speed and following distance when behind a vehicle with a slow-moving vehicle sign? A. Decrease speed and increase following distance. B. Pass the vehicle immediately. C. Maintain normal speed and following distance. Answer. A. Decrease speed and increase following distance. It's important to adjust to the slower pace for safety. Question 66. What are the rules regarding lanes marked with a two-way left turn sign? A. These lanes can be used for high-speed passing. B. Only left turns can be made from these lanes by drivers traveling in both directions. C. The lanes are reserved for emergency vehicles. Answer. B. 
Only left turns can be made from these lanes by drivers traveling in both directions. This lane is specifically designed for vehicles from both directions to safely make left turns. Question 67. How should a driver approach a traffic situation where an added lane sign is present? A. Merge immediately to take advantage of the additional lane. B. Maintain your lane as merging is not necessary. C. Slow down and stop before entering the added lane. Answer. B. Maintain your lane as merging is not necessary. The added lane sign indicates that an additional lane begins and no merging is required. Question 68. Describe the behavior expected from a driver at an intersection with a left turn yield on green sign. A. Proceed with the turn without yielding. B. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. C. Make the turn quickly before the light changes. Answer. B. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians. This sign requires drivers to yield appropriately before completing a left turn. Question 69. What precautions should be taken when driving on roads with loose gravel signs? A. Speed up to minimize the time on loose gravel. B. Maintain a steady speed and avoid sudden changes in direction. C. Pull over and wait for road maintenance. Answer. B. Maintain a steady speed and avoid sudden changes in direction. This helps prevent skidding or losing control on loose gravel. Question 70. When approaching a school zone, what modifications should drivers make to their driving behavior? A. Ignore school zone signs if no children are visible. B. Reduce speed and be prepared to stop for children. C. Maintain normal driving speed. Answer. B. Reduce speed and be prepared to stop for children. It's important to be extra cautious in school zones for the safety of children. Question 71. What is the correct response to a solid white line on the highway? A. Change lanes quickly to get ahead. B. Stay in your lane as changing lanes is discouraged. C. Use it as a guide for maintaining speed. Answer. B. Stay in your lane as changing lanes is discouraged. Solid white lines typically indicate that lane changes should be avoided for safety. Question 72. Describe the legal implications of running a red light in California. A. It is overlooked if no other vehicles are present. B. Possible fines, points on your driving record, and increased insurance rates. C. A warning for the first offense. Answer. B. Possible fines, points on your driving record, and increased insurance rates. Running a red light is a serious traffic violation with significant penalties. Question 73. How should a driver handle a merge onto a busy freeway? A. Stop at the end of the ramp until a gap appears. B. Use the ramp to accelerate to freeway speeds and merge smoothly. C. Merge immediately without speeding up. Answer. B. Use the ramp to accelerate to freeway speeds and merge smoothly. This approach helps integrate the vehicle safely into traffic. Question 74. When is the correct procedure for exiting a freeway? A. Exit at high speed to minimize congestion. B. Signal early, then decrease speed and exit safely. C. Wait until the last moment to signal and then exit quickly. Answer. B. Signal early, then decrease speed and exit safely. Proper signaling and speed adjustment are crucial for a safe freeway exit. Question 75. Explain the importance of seat belts and the legal penalties for not wearing one. A. Seat belts are optional for adult passengers in the back seat. B. Wearing seat belts is mandatory for all passengers, with fines for noncompliance. C. Seat belts should only be worn on long trips. Answer. B. Wearing seat belts is mandatory for all passengers, with fines for noncompliance. Seat belts significantly increase safety in accidents. Question 76. 
What are the steps for safely navigating through a roundabout? A. Enter at high speed to assert right of way. B. Yield to traffic hour D in the roundabout, then enter at a safe speed. C. Stop completely before entering the roundabout. Answer. B. Yield to traffic hour D in the roundabout, then enter at a safe speed. This ensures smooth traffic flow and reduces the risk of collisions. Question 77. Describe how to properly execute a three-point turn. A. Perform the maneuver quickly to avoid oncoming traffic. B. Check for traffic, signal, and then proceed slowly and carefully. C. Use multiple lanes to complete the turn fast. Answer. B. Check for traffic, signal, and then proceed slowly and carefully. A three-point turn must be done safely, ensuring the road is clear. Question 78. How can a driver safely handle high winds while driving, especially on bridges? A. Increase speed to stabilize the vehicle. B. Decrease speed. Hold the steering wheel firmly and be prepared for gusts. C. Ignore the wind unless vehicle movement is affected. Answer. B. Decrease speed. Hold the steering wheel firmly and be prepared for gusts. Reducing speed and maintaining control are vital in high winds. Question 79. What is required of drivers when approaching a pedestrian crosswalk with no signals? A. Yield to pedestrians and stop if necessary. B. Continue at the same speed as pedestrians will wait. C. Honk to alert pedestrians to clear the crosswalk. Answer. A. Yield to pedestrians and stop if necessary. Drivers must always give the right of way to pedestrians at crosswalks. Question 80. Explain the rules for driving with temporary license plates in California. A. Temporary plates are not required. B. Display temporary plates until permanent plates are received. C. Drive without plates until receiving permanent ones. Answer. B. Display temporary plates until permanent plates are received. This ensures the vehicle is identifiable and legally compliant while awaiting permanent registration. Question 81. What steps should you take when your vehicle is approaching a tunnel? A. Speed up to minimize time inside the tunnel. B. Turn on your headlights and reduce speed. C. Close all windows and increase speed. Answer. B. Turn on your headlights and reduce speed. This increases visibility and safety while driving through a tunnel. Question 82. How does California law regulate the transportation of large items that extend beyond the vehicle's length? A. There are no specific regulations for transporting large items. B. Permits are required for transporting items that extend beyond vehicle boundaries. C. Only light items can extend beyond the vehicle's length. Answer. B. Permits are required for transporting items that extend beyond vehicle boundaries. This ensures safety and compliance with traffic regulations. Question 83. What is the procedure for reporting an accident involving property damage but no injuries? A. Leave the scene if there are no injuries. B. Report the accident to the police immediately. C. Exchange information with the other party and report the accident within a week. Answer. B. Report the accident to the police immediately. Prompt reporting helps in the proper documentation and handling of the incident. Question 84. How should a driver react if approached by a police car with flashing lights and a siren while driving? A. Continue driving at the same speed. B. Pull over to the right side of the road and stop. C. Speed up and move to the left lane. Answer. B. Pull over to the right side of the road and stop. This provides a clear way for emergency vehicles to pass safely. Question 85. Describe the process to follow if your vehicle's registration has expired while you are out of state. A. Drive without concern until returning to California. 
B. Renew the registration online or contact DMV for guidance. C. Wait to renew until returning to California. Answer. B. Renew the registration online or contact DMV for guidance. This prevents any legal issues while the vehicle is out of state. Question 86. How can a driver safely deal with aggressive drivers on the road? A. Respond with similar driving behaviors. B. Keep a safe distance and avoid confrontation. C. Speed up to pass the aggressive driver. Answer. B. Keep a safe distance and avoid confrontation. Staying calm and maintaining space can prevent dangerous situations. Question 87. What are the requirements for a legal pass on a two-lane road? A. Ensure no oncoming traffic and pass quickly. B. Pass only on the right side. C. Signal and pass when the center line is a solid stripe. Answer. A. Ensure no oncoming traffic and pass quickly. Legal passing requires clear visibility and safety considerations. Question 88. Explain the concept of defensive driving and why it is important. A. Driving aggressively to dominate the road. B. Anticipating potential hazards and reacting safely. C. Following all vehicles closely to react quickly. Answer. B. Anticipating potential hazards and reacting safely. Defensive driving reduces risks and can prevent accidents by being proactive. Question 89. What precautions should drivers take when driving in mountainous areas with steep grades? A. Use lower gears to control speed on descents. B. Maintain high speeds to climb effectively. C. Use the highest gear possible to save fuel. Answer. A. Use lower gears to control speed on descents. This technique helps maintain control without relying solely on brakes. Question 90. How should a driver adjust their driving in response to icy road conditions? A. Increase speed for less time on the road. B. Decrease speed and use gentle maneuvers. C. Apply brakes regularly to test traction. Answer. B. Decrease speed and use gentle maneuvers. This approach minimizes the risk of skidding and losing control. Question 91. What should a driver do immediately after a side collision? A. Drive away from the scene quickly. B. Check for injuries and call for help if needed. C. Wait inside the car for others to offer assistance. Answer. B. Check for injuries and call for help if needed. Safety and health are the priorities after any collision. Question 92. How are drivers supposed to use their high beams correctly at night? A. Use high beams in all night driving conditions. B. Use high beams only when there are no oncoming vehicles. C. Never use high beams in the city. Answer. B. Use high beams only when there are no oncoming vehicles. This prevents blinding other drivers and enhances safety for all. Question 93. What are the steps to follow if a driver notices signs of brake wear while driving? A. Continue driving to reach a service station. B. Test the brakes by applying hard pressure. C. Stop driving and have the vehicle inspected. Answer. C. Stop driving and have the vehicle inspected. Addressing brake issues immediately can prevent accidents. Question 94. Describe how to correctly use a car's safety features like traction control and electronic stability control. A. Disable these features for more control over the vehicle. B. Rely on these features to drive faster in poor conditions. C. Understand and utilize these features to enhance vehicle safety. Answer. C. Understand and utilize these features to enhance vehicle safety. These systems are designed to improve stability and traction during challenging driving conditions. Question 95. How should a driver proceed when facing a yield sign at a busy junction? A. Stop completely before proceeding. 
B. Slow down, look for traffic, and proceed when safe. C. Ignore the sign if the road seems clear. Answer. B. Slow down, look for traffic, and proceed when safe. Yielding correctly helps manage traffic flow and prevents accidents. Question 96. What are the guidelines for handling a vehicle breakdown in traffic? A. Leave the vehicle immediately and seek help. B. Signal, pull over safely, and set up warning signs if possible. C. Continue driving to the nearest exit. Answer. B. Signal, pull over safely, and set up warning signs if possible. This alerts other drivers and ensures your safety while waiting for assistance. Question 97. Explain the legal requirements for carrying proof of insurance and vehicle registration while driving. A. Only required during vehicle inspection. B. Must be carried at all times while driving. C. Required only when driving out of state. Answer. B. Must be carried at all times while driving. This ensures that drivers can provide proof of legal compliance if stopped by authorities. Question 98. How should drivers manage their driving speed in construction zones? A. Maintain normal speeds to minimize traffic delays. B. Observe reduced speed limits and be alert for workers and equipment. C. Increase speed to pass through the zone quickly. Answer. B. Observe reduced speed limits and be alert for workers and equipment. This promotes safety in potentially hazardous areas. Question 99. What are the legal limits for window tinting on personal vehicles in California? A. Any level of tinting is allowed as long as the driver can see out. B. Tinting is allowed only on rear windows. C. Front side windows must allow more than 70% of light in. Answer. C. Front side windows must allow more than 70% of light in. This regulation ensures sufficient visibility for safe driving. Question 100. Describe the procedure for changing a flat tire on a busy highway. A. Change the tire quickly regardless of traffic. B. Pull over to a safe area, turn on hazard lights, and change the tire. C. Continue driving to a tire shop. Answer. B. Pull over to a safe area, turn on hazard lights, and change the tire. Ensuring safety while changing a tire is crucial, especially on busy highways.